I didn't know I had that. Okay. You don't remember me pulling that stuff out of your sock when I was searching? I never even turned around. Your sock was holding dope. But the whole point, man, I didn't know I had that. Oh. After arrest and before trial comes jail. All suspects are innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. The inmates that we house here in the county, they're waiting for their court dates. So they're not all guilty. A lot of inmates were just in the wrong place at the wrong time. We're not here to punish them. We're just detaining them for that short time while they go on the court dates. We got a disturbance with an inmate in 56 Bravo. Okay, I'm advising you that you need to, you need to put your hands out. Okay. Okay, when you realize that, you realize that we're going to spray. You're going to be sprayed. All right, you've been answered up. Let me grab his arm, sir. numerous times to place his hands through the bean shoe so that we could place restraints on him so we could go check his cell. The inmate continues to refuse. Uh, Sergeant Gibson administer, <clears throat> administered OC spray. I have fog, so it's, uh, <coughs> it'll affect inmate respiratory system a lot better than the, this stream will. You ready to comply? <coughs> Place your blanket down. Get the guy suited up. Emergency response uh, certified officers have been notified. They'll suit up in their gear in 56. At that time, we'll brief them how the cell extraction will commence. We have um, two officers on arms, two officers on legs. Officers on the arms will apply restraints to his arms. Uh, the two officers on his legs will apply the leg restraints to their legs. Listen up, guys. We're going hard and fast. We don't have to bring him down in the cell because there's not, not enough room. Let's try to bring him outside. Then we'll take him on down and secure him. Questions, comments, complaints? None? All right, guys. Let's suit up. You make no aggressive move. Get over there and lay down. Get over there and lay down. Get over there and lay down. Now, right there on the floor. Lay down. No, on the floor, on the floor, on the floor. It's not good flag. Are we good? Davis, you got it? You got it? You got it? We need the hose. Huh? We need the hose. Yeah. You got, you got a shower? Let's get the hose. 
The water going. Nah, what is that up that, that on my head, man? Water going. Me, man. Boom. Nah, I don't want that spraying down on me, man. Well, it's going to happen. That, hey, hold on. It's hold water. On. Uh, inmate is being decontaminated with cold water for approximately 10 minutes. Um, after this, we'll get him in a dry uniform, make sure that his cell's clean, and put him right back in the cell where he came from. Okay, plenty of chances. Combined, you never did. All right, gents, we're done. It's 10 minutes. Let's bring him out and have a major Take him over to the table and day room. Check it out my I got a cell just for you. I have down on the ground, head towards the door. No, 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 head towards the door, head towards the door. Uh-uh, turn him around, head this way. We're removing his uh, wet uniforms, probably contaminated with OC spray as well. Uh, we got him a dry uniform in there, so we're going to go ahead and make sure that his uh, wet uniform is off. All right, sir. Ready? All right. All right. What started all this? No, inmate wouldn't comply. We had to do mandatory window checks. He wouldn't come up. So we asked, order, advised, gave me every opportunity to comply, and he just never would. So we had to deploy OC. He didn't benefit in any way for acting up tonight. He's still in the same cell. In fact, he's going to be there longer now. Uh, based off of his behavior tonight. I've been on the department for about a year and a half now, and I have to say it's probably one of the best jobs you can have. And the great things about working for the department is really just the fact that you get to work the jail, and when you work the jail, you learn a lot about yourself, and you learn a lot about how to interact with criminals. There's a lot of guys who don't want to do it because of the danger factor, and there's a lot of guys who want to do it because of the danger factor. So that's one of the best parts about this job. OK, face the car right there. There you go. There you go. Nice and easy. It's gone. Hollywood! These guys are just gonna make sure everything's gonna be yeah. okay, all right? That's all they're doing. That's it. Just... How much you have to drink today, man? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. Just from the public. Trouble from the get-go. What's going on? Uh, Were you out tonight? I uh, having fun with some chicks. Yeah. How'd you meet up with them? They just call me, yo, what's up, baby boy? I'm like, tell him what's up, girl. They called you baby boy? Yeah. And then so you they just, they all kissing me all of a sudden, boom, this cop's coming into me like, whoa, what the You weren't drinking at all tonight? No. No, because you, you kind of smell like it. You kind of... No. How old are you? 21. Do you have a driver's license? Yeah. Would you mind standing up and I can take and check your pockets for you? No problem. Okay. Just stand right there. Stand right there. Stand right there. I'm going to take and see what you have in your pocket. pocket. This pocket? You don't have anything sharp on you, do you? No, I don't got Are you sure it's in this pocket? See, they're trying me like a terrorist, people. No, I just want to make sure we got an ID for you. Oh, it's checking. Oh, man. No, oh, people. Whoa, people. Whoa. Whoa, people. Whoa. You had a driver's license? Oh, or? hell no. <laughs> Where do you think it might be? My homie took it from me. Your homie took it from you? OK. All right, walk this way. We're going to get you in the booking process. Uh, now I got to go to where the evil do now. Here? Come on. Can I take my shoes? No, you don't get your shoes when you go. Okay. Kneel down. I gotta kneel Lord. down to You the gotta wall. kneel down. You think we need to permit? Mm. Yeah, we'll just put them out. Whoa. Yeah, let's probably prone them out. Hey, no, hey, no, no lay down on your chest. Oh. Hey, relax. Just relax, relax, Edward. Just relax. Relax. Pick Edward. Guys. relax. Edward, relax. Don't, re don't resist, just relax. Oh. All right. All right. How's that hurt? Welcome.
Okay. Uh, looks like Poway Sheriff's Department uh, has picked him up for being drunk in public and it's ruining his night. He's just a dumb drunk kid, that's all he is, and I have a feeling he's gonna have a long career of coming here or wasted youth right there. Can I read your pistol? Over here. What's that? I'll just make a drill. Bravo. What's going on, Ralph? How you doing? My daughter hit me, I hit her back. That's that. You, know I mean? you hit me, my, my, my roof, put hands on me, I put hands on you. That's that. Sometimes you need to put your hands in your pocket. Son, when your kid put hands on you, you put them back. That's that. Now, if you got kids, find out. What I didn't do when they were babies, I'm gonna do it now. But Ralph, when you were a little boy, were you told it's okay to hit girls? I, listen, listen. No, no, no. yes. When sir. I was a baby? Yeah. Son, I got hit for everybody. I got 13 brothers. Mm -hmm. And I got spanked for every one of them. Okay, but were you ever told... You understand what I'm saying? Okay, yeah, but were you ever yeah, told it's not good to hit I'll, girls? It was annoying no, to hit not, girls. it's not. Okay. If she hits you first, what are you gonna do? Stay walk there. Walk away. And, Ralph, son, Ralph, all you have to do is walk away. She hit me away. first. Just walk she away. She knocked man. me down. Okay, then just walk away, Ralph. Son, she knocked me down two times. You can't be doing. You can't have all this pride, oh, man. Look, oh, where, no, look no. where you end up. He don't understand what I'm saying. I'm a uh, man. So you're, am I. You're, you're my baby. You don't hit your dad. That's the last thing you do. That's a sin. Okay, then just walk so away. I got up. No, no, I got up and she <clears> came at me again. So I stopped her with open hand. Bam. Are you gonna teach your grandbaby that it's all right to hit women? Is, you, now, is it a grandson? You, know, you can sit grand... here and talk all that smack you want to talk, but I'll try to teach my granddaughter one thing. If you're going to pull that with me, honey, I'll smack you at This is my house. You live at my house. Ralph, I'm just, that, you that. know. Son, son. If that's hey, really the way you hey, feel, Ralph. Saying? My wife knows that. You put your hand on me, I'll put it back. That's that. Okay, let's walk this way, please. please. Yeah. All I'm going to do is try and help I'm, you get I'm, to the I'm, booking I'm cooperative. Very cooperative. Very cooperative. Very cooperative. Very cooperative. Yes. Uh, uh, Oh, take me. Take me one side, have a seat a little bit. Try and get you sobered up a little bit. Sobered up. I'll get out of here. Rob, you're a little too drunk to be put with everyone else right now, okay? So we're gonna give you some time to sober up by yourself. Be a man. Be for real. Take care of what you gotta take care of. I'll beat the up you when it comes to my kid. You don't know me. You don't know me. I look little. All right, Ralph, just scoot over here so this officer can get out of here. Packages. Oh, I know, man. Uh, We're going to go right over here. Ralph, have a seat right inside there. Okay. okay. Anything else you want to say, Ralph? Yeah, I do. I'm innocent. Sir. The, the, <laughs> guy, the, guy, the guy I really want to shake hands to is the guy that brought me here. And he did. Well, it looks like he made a new friend there. You guys can... After he gets out in 72 hours on Monday, you guys can go hang out or something. Sounds like he was brought in in 2002 for the same thing, so always there's some family issues. Probably can get some family counseling, it'll be okay. And Corral's a new drinking buddy. I really love this job because every day is different and you never know what you're going to expect. Basically, the booking process here at Tulsa County Jail starts with the inmates coming in. We search them. They come to the general area and they get to use the phone to call their relatives to try to bond out of jail. Another thing about this job, I like helping the community. I feel like I'm really doing something and this is one of those uh, type of jobs where, you know, everything matters. Nice. Nobody can use the phone. This is Have a why seat. more than one people don't stand. Have a seat. Have a seat. Hey, it, should, it goes for both of y'all. Either one of you. Okay? So this is done. All right. All right. Hey, What's going on over there? Oh, a couple guys having an argument about the phone, and I told them if they didn't stop, I was going to take them off the phone. 
Okay. Don't touch me! Stop now or I'm gonna tase you, do you understand? Oh, you like that, you? I got him. He did not start He put his hands on me. He did not start He put his hands on me. Stand up. Don't put your hands on me. You don't know me. Don't touch me. Well, uh, two guys have a dispute over the telephone. And, uh, one guy got upset, got us stood up, the other guy swung at him. They started fighting. So something about a time issue, but the guy had only been on the phone a couple of minutes. Somebody punched somebody. I think he swung first because I think the other guy put hands on him, like to get him off the phone. Yeah. The green swung first. Green did? Yeah. And that's the one in pen, right? Because he swung on him, then the other one jumped on him. So you're going to put him up? Yeah, because this was the second time. Right. He was up there at the phone threatening people and because the first time we had to walk over there it was because he was running his mouth with the guy that's on the phone right now. Okay. So we think the guy in 10 has just kind of got sucked into the deal? Well, he no. probably instigated it. Yeah, they were both running their mouths at each other. Okay. We got him locked down for a little while, let him calm down and pull him back out in a little while and try to finish the process. Take off your shoes. Oh, okay. Go ahead, turn around, put your hands on the wall, please. Spread your legs a little bit. Okay, sir, while I'm doing this search, I'm gonna ask that you keep your hands on the wall at all times, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Lift his leg back, sir. Walk to that metal detector right there, have a seat on the front row, we'll get yourself back to you. What was that? Eight baggies? Yeah, eight bags. Uh, the other officer over here tested this one right here, and it field tested a presumptive positive for cocaine. Since all of them are packaged the same, the same substance, the same material, we're going to assume that they're all the same, so we're going to charge him with possession, cocaine with intent to distribute, and also possession, marijuana, AFCF, okay. and let the DA decide if they want to charge him with possession with intent or with smuggling into a jail. Okay. I'll talk to you and get a statement from you here in a minute for the report. All right. Found marijuana and cocaine in your sock. So your total bond now is ten thousand four hundred dollars. Man, how is that, man? I, I didn't see nothing. They didn't pull nothing out of my pockets or nothing. I searched them and I found the bag of marijuana and the eight little baggies of cocaine. I didn't know I had that. <laughs> okay. You don't remember me pulling that stuff out of your sock when I was searching? I never did turn around. Your sock was holding dope, man. But the whole point, man, I didn't know I had that on me. That's the whole point, man. The I whole point. I did not know you have something in your sock. Hell, man, he, he searched me through. He I pulled my pocket side. How can and you everything. not know you, you have, have something in your sock? Because when he pulled me down here, he no, said, man, my I'm, property look, is. I'm not asking how, what he did. You had stuff in your sock. How do you not know you have marijuana and what else was okay. it? Cocaine in your sock. I didn't know that. Well, the whole point about it is, man, he threw a church, man. Tell it to the judge. No! Um. 
coming in here for public intoxication. Come to find out, he had the marijuana, cocaine, and now he's going to be charged with uh, possession. Would have been a 24 to 40 hour charge with the public intoxication. Now it's going to be a little longer. And his bond went from 150 to over 10,000. So he's going to be here for a while. Working in booking is different than any other part of the jail. It involves a lot of hands-on. You have to make sure that they don't have any weapons on them. They have drugs, you have to take them away. There's a lot more involved. The most dangerous time up here is when the cuffs come off um, because you never know how they're gonna react once they're in here. They realize that they're in jail and there's no way out. So the anxiety does hit them once they come in here and you start taking their only possessions away to put them in a bag. Lift his foot up. What's wrong with him? Turn around, open your mouth. Lift up your tongue. All the way up. Okay. Woo! Wow, you've been smoking something. You're reeking. Okay, what? Marijuana. You had five dollars when you came in. Show the bottom line. Put my shoes back on, you know? Yeah. Shoes back on. I'm done with them. Okay, have a seat over there. Wait for them to call you up. Oh. He left marijuana all over my table, so. He was, look, he's still eating it. Come here, come, come here. Come here. Come here, cause you're, you know what, come on. Up, 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 up. What, what you up. I know he's reeking here. Come here. No. Yeah, look, it's still falling out of his pocket. Okay. See? What? He's got all kinds coming out. <laughs> he was eating it. Oh, yeah, there it is. He keeps eating it. Keep your hands in front of you. Keep your hands in front of you. Keep your hands in front of you. There you go. Yeah, put them in front of you. It's a bud. No, no, it's just a bud. What, like? You just caught yourself another felony. Good job. I'm feeling it. Yeah. Introduction into yeah, detention. Get the f out of my face, buddy. Get out them streets. I'll beat your f Realize your face. He isn't going to, like, beat anybody. I got him. Yeah. Have you already searched? Hey, brother. Want him down? No. Oh, OK. No. Give me your hand. Give me your hand. hand. I didn't. I ain't got it. Sir, let go. You got it? Yep. Hold on. <laughs> Give me your hand. You Sir, if you quit resisting, you will not quit be Quit resisting hurt. or you're going in the chair, buddy. Okay. So watch his face. He's trying to bite you. Put your arms out. Put your arms out, Put your arms sir. Arms out. Let sir. go your hand. Sir, let go. I got the... Oh, sorry. Here. Here. Get your other arm out, sir. Put your other arm out. Your arms up. Take your arm out. He won't. Put your arm out, man. Get your arm out, Give him up, sir. Give him up. Okay, y'all find somewhere else to be. If you're not on the other side of the wall. It could have been a whole lot easier, man. I can't feel my feet. Stand up. Come on. Stand up. Stand up. You're sharing him? Got him. Yeah. Are sharing him? All right, let's go. Well, there's all his marijuana. Keep staring, pal. Hey, somebody watch that? Yeah, you're going to watch that. All the way down behind. Brown says, here. Put your hands all the way down. Y'all grab me up for no reason. Sir, we Holding have... like what? Half a bud out? Half a gram of marijuana He's out? He's already the, the other deputy said he was going to beat him up. Do not Don't do kick. That, buddy. Don't kick. Y'all can search me down. Y'all ain't even fighting the drug. 
What? I saw him eating it. Yeah? He was eating it, and I, I was like, what? And I... That great, huh? And he was smelling like a bad thing. Yeah, when I cut him down, I didn't fill it up. Half a gram I can still smell it. We keep a 15-minute watch on. So as I was searching him, I did notice he smelled like he had been smoking marijuana. But I still searched and searched and did my pat down like I was supposed to, and it was wedged in his corner, in the corner of his pocket, and just goes to show you. You never know, no matter how much you pat a person down, where you're going to find it. This is where the line has to end, where they can't have weapons past this point, and they can't have marijuana past this point or any kind of drugs, because once it gets past this point and gets over there, then it can get into the jail population. See, my deputies catch up out there. They're a little busy at the moment. They're going to pull you out and finish yeah. processing you, okay? Uh, I can't feel much of this. All right. Well, that's part of the handcuff deal. Here's what's going to happen. We'll take you out. We'll take those cuffs off, and then you should be good to go. All right? What I need to know is, is why you didn't just relinquish what you had to the deputies like they instructed. What was up with that? I didn't want an extra charge. You didn't want the extra charge? Is that what it was? Yeah. All right. We have to go back in a holding cell and until you cooperate, that's what it's going to be, all right? All right, now, this is a holding cell that we use when we put people in the restraint chair. Basically, when we started renovations here about a year ago, some of our supplies found their way into here because we had limited space. All right, listen, I'm going to have to lean forward, then I'm going to have you stand straight up. Lean forward. Put your feet down, stand straight up. There you go. We're going to walk you out and around to the home cell. Take the cuffs off and let you sit down for a minute. And we'll pull you back out and let you get to start with the booking process. If you're ready to cooperate with the booking process, then we'll get you on your way. He's going to be charged with introduction of contraband to a detention facility, as well as a DUI. We house all kinds of inmates from all over the country, male and female. Everything from blocking public passage to multiple homicides. Well, you're always uneasy because everything is a potential danger in a correctional setting because a lot of these people are recidivist and they have all day to, to see what they can do with what they have. Right now we're headed to the special detention unit. That's where, the, that's where people are housed that break the rules and regulations of the institution. They were seen by a hearing board, and they were sentenced to do so many days in the special detention unit. Now, there's privileges that you lose while you're in there. The ability to write letters, watch TV, uh, listen to your radio. They have to understand that you can't break a rule and be rewarded. Get ready for Cal. Their cell is thoroughly searched. They are thoroughly searched. This is done before every shift. Two coming out. Step to the wall, face the wall, hands up. They're gonna be thoroughly pat searched by the officers. The cell is gonna be checked for contraband. They're allowed to use uh, toothbrushes and, and pens. Uh, they're not allowed to keep them, they're allowed to use them and then be returned. Sometimes uh, they end up in here. They're allowed to read their mail, they're allowed to receive their mail while they're in the special detention unit. They're not allowed to retain it. It goes into their personal property. Found a spoon up in the windows. They do get spoons to eat, but they're not allowed to keep them. Uh, anything, anything can be shaped into a weapon with enough ingenuity. We try to do is try to alleviate, giving them, giving them the tools. Sometimes, sometimes they hide things in plain sight. Not allowed to write letters or anything in here, so he, he had somehow gotten a pen. It looks as if uh, it's a song or, or a letter to a loved one on a roll of toilet paper. It was probably done recently. They do come out for, for hearings. They're allowed out uh, an hour a day for rec. So at some point, they could have uh, 
attained a writing instrument. Who's on the bottom bunk? I don't know whose cell it is and what they're in here for, but we will find out. Thank you. further search of the cell found that he had hidden the pen between the bunk and the wall with a little message on it. He's saying that the use of this pen is, is, is knowledge. He knows he's not supposed to have it in there, so he hid it. Unfortunately, it was found. Back in. We're not punishing anybody. Uh, they know if they break the rule, exactly what's going to happen. They're gonna come down here. They're gonna lose their privileges. And while they're in there, it's a time for reflection. They can think of what they can do to change that so they don't end up in this situation again. We're pulling out of SDU now. The time that he was sent to an SDU is now up. He's going to be transferred from SDU cell to bullpen four, which is a reclassification bullpen. Please stand by. Can I propose to my wife right quick? Can you propose to your wife real yes. quick? You want to propose to your wife on camera? Yeah, on camera. I'm sure. I'm sure that uh, it's a unique. It's a unique uh, uh, request. But yeah. go right ahead. <laughs> Tanya, I love you, baby. You mean more to me than the air I breathe. There's no words that can possibly express the love that I feel for you, baby. Someday I'm hoping to marry you. Will you marry me? That was wonderful. It would be better for my girl. <laughs> that was wonderful. Is that what you wrote on? Is that what you wrote on the toilet paper? No. Or that was a precursor. Actually, no, actually, I had an idea, man. You know what I mean about um, joining couples, hands in oneness. Okay. I really don't know it all in totality, but I had it written down in there. You know what I mean? I really need that. <laughs> don't make I me laugh. I said, I'm not making you laugh. <laughs> you see, my grill is God. I said that. <laughs> But see, as part of oneness, if, if I may embellish on your point, right, right. as part of oneness, we, we take it all in totality using your words, right? right? right. With or without the grill, your proposal was beautiful. Was it, man? Thanks, I, 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 I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope that it comes to fruition for you. I hope so too, man. All right. In corrections, there's a human side to this. We're all humans. There's funny things that go on. They know and we know when it's the time to laugh and when it's the time to be serious. This is a human game. We're firm but fair. I've been a sergeant for just a little over a year now. Uh, sergeant's actually the perfect job here. It doesn't rain on me, I don't have any bad weather. Temperature controlled, climate control inside here, so. Uh, I've always enjoyed it. I've enjoyed the work uh, with the different types of people, uh, the different excitement. You know, it can be a very boring day, and then it can all of a sudden, in a, in a flash, turn into a, a very exciting day. Down. There's blood everywhere. Down on the ground! Get back, Down now! Down. Down. On your face. All right. Go. Put your hands behind your back. Put your head down. Put your head down. Your head your head down. down. Hand behind your back like you just said. I'm down. Secure the stars. Are you guys set up? Get up. Hey, Titan, we're yeah. going to have to get all these guys out of here. Move to another cell. Up on your side so the nurse can look at you. Oh. Sit up. Don't act like you're nearly dead now. You were standing up yelling at the guy when we came in. Just put him against the wall right over there for right now. So what happened? There ain't no age, so you don't need to worry about it. He's lucky for that. So what happened? That's the question. Oh, that's a good one. 
I'm a jarhead. I don't, I don't talk about it. I don't really care. I told him I asked him, I said, you're going to be on the phone all night? They hit you with the phone? No. Right, well, we were just checking the phone to see if there's any blood on the phone because the guy's nose is completely smashed in on the, across the bridge of it. Take pictures? We're going to take pictures of all this because either guy's going to be battery with substantial yeah, bodily harm, which is going to be a felony three to six years in prison. So whatever you were here for, now you just add it to it. But he, he was... I don't... All right. You smashed him in the face. His nose is smashed to pieces, and the blood's all over your hands. All right, here's your chance. What was your side then? Tell me your side. Now, I was on the phone minding my business. He's talking about get on the floor or whatever, and I'm like, man, can I use the phone, man? You need to stop tripping. This is not right. You know what I'm saying? You calm down with it. I'm going to be off the phone. Like, man, you better get off the phone. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to beat you up like you little kid. Then he just like, whoa, 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 whoa. Then I hit him. But for some reason, I blacked out. I hit him. Twice or maybe yeah. more? Twice, twice. Just with your fist? Yeah. You didn't hit him with a phone? Like no, that. nothing. No phone, nothing. I hit him That's twice. why you got the blood on your hands from hitting him in the nose, right? Yeah. You can sit right there. Call her when you're ready. All right. Hey, Ron? Yeah. And you do want to press charges? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right. You know, I mean, just wanted him to move so I could lay down, get off the phone sometime. He says he was talking on the phone, and this guy came up to him and told him, hey, you need to get off the phone. And he said, you know, I'm talking. And then he says he hit him. He punched him. He says twice, maybe. So he, I believe he punched him more than twice. He admitted that he uh, struck him first? He struck him, right. He didn't hit him with the phone. He hit him with his fist. I didn't let them wash him off yet because we wanted to take the pictures of the blood on his hand because he definitely has blood all over his right hand that he used to strike him with. It. Good deal. And the picture shows that his nose was not flat and crushed in like it is right now. Yeah, we got to call crime scene. That becomes a crime scene, so we have to make sure the door's secure. No one's going to go in or out until criminalistics can come down. They'll take the pictures of what the crime scene is. It shows where the blood splattered from over by the phone, which is where he hit him at. Were you on the phone for a long time, any extended period of time? I did. I hung up the phone for a minute, fixed my shoe. Well, he tells me to move, basically. I'm like, I'm using the phone. Could you wait? Then he got to the back of my head and started yelling in my ear, and I'm like, move. Now I got up, and I blacked out, and I hit him. Did he ever lay his hands on you at any time? I don't believe so, no. But I felt threatened. The young kid that hit him was actually standing up on the bench over here when we got to the door trying to tell the guy to stay away. And the guy bleeding from his nose is standing right here wanting him to come down off the bench because now he really wants to fight him. Yeah, it's just the way the break is. Um, I would find that really hard to believe that you would get that off of a knuckle. come from the edge or something? Exactly, because it's so much harder than your hand well, could do that. Because it's just got this nice little ink that I just would find it really hard to believe that your knuckle would do that. So. I'm saying that's where that came from, you know what I'm saying? Right. I you know, set close enough to the phone that he obviously was able to get a hold of it and wrap me with it. Of course, I was sitting there with my eyes closed, so, you know, what the hell. He after he hit one. you with that, though, he hit you with several punches after that. Oh, yeah, but I still got up and chased after his ass. You know, I, I'm glad I didn't get a hold of him. He was 20 minutes away from being released on his misdemeanor charges. Wow, that's Except now he's got a felony ridiculous. in jail, in disciplinary housing. Yeah, some things are learned the hard way. Anything I failed to ask you that you'd like to add your statement? No, I got nothing. That's all I want to say. I don't got nothing to say, man. I just, I don't know, man. It's confused right now. Well, this is what's going to happen. With what you've told me so far, we're going to rebook you for battery by prisoner. Yes. That's just the pet arrest package. We submit that to the DA. They make the decision whether they want to prosecute or not. All right, go ahead and stand up. Palms um, together. Put you a super yes, sir. Is it going to be more comfortable <coughs> having your hands like that? Or it's, it's like this. Like that? Yeah. That's a, that's a I mean, that's the victim. So this would be the suspect. So we're going up to five, right? Yes. Then we move to a disciplinary housing. We had an opportunity to tell his side of the story, plus a look at the reports written by the officers and the witness statements, and then we'll determine how long he'll remain in, a, in our disciplinary unit. We're just completely separate from the criminal action of it. The criminal action of it will actually go to court, 
and he'll be able to give his evidence on his side of the story and to then see if he's going to be uh, do any time for this or end up with the felony. And he went from about 20 minutes away from release to suddenly going to disciplinary housing, plus looking at now three to six years in prison. I've been a correction officer for 13 years. Primarily, it's been booking for almost 10 years. We get everything, the murderers, the rapists, the child molesters, we do get it all. Every day is a different story, every day is a different adventure. You know, you come in, you don't know what's gonna happen. When you think you've just seen it all, something else goes off. Code Red, available officers report to Code Red. There's an incident in the dorm, so every officer available is gonna respond, K-9 is gonna respond, and we'll see how when we get there, how big of a fight it might be. Make sure this door is closed behind us. Make sure it's closed behind us. Pull it tight, pull it tight. Pull it tight, so we good. All right. Let's go, let's go. Hey, let's go. On your bags. Let's go. Let's go. Break it up. Shoot him. Shoot him. Get up. Get on your bag. Face hit that. Face down. Face down. Face down. Everybody else, get on your bag. Face down. Face the opposite way to the rear wall. Everybody face to the rear wall. Now. All right, let's go. Open it up. They were going at it. They were going at it. No one should be looking back here. Nobody. No move. Nobody move. Face down. Take that head off. Face down. Lay on your belly. All right. Okay. That's it. That's it on the fighter. That's it. They were growing at it right there. So. They were going at it right there, so. Okay, I was with that. I was putting a transfer in. They just got the right. He got shot. You feeling pain anywhere? That's it? See, uh, less lethal pepper ball launcher. What's that? Baby powder or something yeah, in there? It's just baby's like talcum powder. Paintball gun? I take the bolt of metal for the paintball gun. Get mine. Bolton, grab mine. Okay, and my scissor. Come here. Face the wall over there. Found the two one. Put him in there. All right, he's going to be housed in here till the sergeant does his investigation, finds out why exactly they were fighting. All right. We'll bring you uh, your clothes and uh, shoes. All right? What size are those? Eight. Well, we're going to try to keep everybody separate for now. Step in. All right, that's what typically happens every time there's a fight in the institution. They're separated. An investigation is done as to why they were fighting. They were either one or both to be charged with fighting, depending. They find out who's the aggressor or whatever reason. It's up to the sergeants and classification what they're going to do with them after this point. All right, listen up. You're uh, charged with fighting with another person, also charged with refusing an order. How do you plead? Not guilty. Well, what were you doing? I was playing chess. You were playing chess, and? And uh, I don't know the other guy's name. I, I know him by Muslim. He was banging cards on the table. And I, kept, and I asked him repeatedly. I said, excuse me, man. You know, every time you bang on the table, the chess pieces fly up, and we're playing on this table, too. So he's like, oh, I don't care, you know, you can go to another table. The table, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's for everybody to enjoy, you know what I'm saying? So I said, please, man, stop banging on Who the table. Who threw the first punch? You threw he the first punch? No, he put, he, his, did? he put his hands on me. Oh, yeah? And that's when I pushed him off me, and we started fighting. Okay. 
They're refusing an order. The officers weren't telling you to stop fighting? They weren't yelling? You didn't, you didn't hear them? Sarge, I was involved in a fight. Yes. I'm not listening to the... I, I'm not even okay. hearing the... No, I'm you not, heard when, when they shot you with the gun, though. I, that you, that yeah, you felt, right? Felt you that, stopped sir. right away, didn't yes, you? Sir. Oh, okay. So right now you'll be placed in SDU until, we, until you're hearing. SDU? Until you're hearing, yeah. Okay? Good boy. It was crazy how it went down. You know what I mean? There's two whole tables, unoccupied, you know what I mean? We're there first. They choose to sit in the back of us to play, you know, to uh, play chess. But yet they want to complain about a slam. Come on, you know how it is when you play spades, man. You know what I mean? We all amped up. So then he comes and just like straight what they call D-blocking the whole game. If I can't play chess, nobody ain't playing. So I'm like, hey, look at this guy, man. You know what I'm saying? Okay, well, you're not playing chess, man. I just sat back. But then when I thought it was over, when he moved and I went to resume the game, you know what I mean? He came and just pushed me out the way. You know, once you throw the first blow, man, now it's fighting stat. All right, it's going to be investigated now, and then you'll go in front of the hearing board and they'll make the final decision. All right, you can put him back. Let's go, Lord. Fernando! The other guy's not going to do it. He's going to lock him in and pull the other one out. When you're in this type of environment with people with different issues, anything can go off and anything can change your day. So if they plead not guilty to fighting, they'll set up for a hearing. One will go back to the same dorm and the other one will go to another dorm. That's how a fight goes. Oh, okay. I'm Deputy Frank Rapsat with the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office. What we have to deal with is substance abuse and alcohol. Yeah, it's a big major thing down in Florida. Suspects that come in, it's a big issue that we show the respect no matter what condition they're in, whether they're drunk, on drugs, we still have to show the respect to them as well as we want the respect back. All right. <laughs> you know what? Hey, uh, one, no, hey, hey. Come on, smart mouth. Abuse, 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 abuse. The cops are abusing people. See him? Ma'am. Okay. I did nothing wrong. Don't I did nothing wrong. You, you, are, not to to you are not going to disrespect me like that, okay? You will not disrespect me. I disrespect anybody. My mother knows judges in New Shut York. It doesn't matter, ma'am. You're, You're hurting my arm. You're trying to my You're hurting my arm. I didn't do anything wrong. Stop yelling. Call my lawyer. No, I don't call people's lawyers. My mother is a judge in New York. Ma'am, I'm from New York, so you're being stupid right now. I'm a New York as well, okay? Nice mouth. You kiss your mom with that uh, mouth? I, I was never read my right. Well, you definitely have the right to remain silent. At any given time you want, That's you have the right, right to it. And we'd appreciate it. Roll a little out that. with me, man. Thanks That's a care. shame to claim that you're a New Yorker. Whew. And what did I do? Just comply with the orders, OK? Nah. You don't put your hands on me Keep your like hand that. up here and don't I move like I, I just told you. I might catch a beating right now. Stand right there. You want to strip my clothes? Strip my Bye. Clothes. I've got some clothes, thanks. Appreciate it. Please. Sit in. young lady. I want to apologize, everybody. Not everybody from New York's like that. Uh, so now she's being really obnoxious and she's being rude and disrespectful to, to the law enforcement. So she's going to have to stay in there until we get her charged in and hopefully she'll calm down after that. So. Alpha Knuckles, uh, can you explain to us why she was brought in here? Yeah, she was very disorderly. She was trespassed from the casino. She was told to leave. We dealt with her in a real nice manner. She got very irate with us, started yelling at all. Was she walking out staggering, or was she just yelling? No, she actually refused to pay a cab driver and pay the cab driver at a later point in time. But then she uh, caused a disturbance screaming uh, inside the uh, casino. We're just going to relocate this lady from the holding cell she's in with a couple other female inmates over to this one because she's a little bit loud and combative, disruptive. We got it. I've been violated. The cops have beat me. Oh, yeah, they have beat me. This officer. Here you go. Here you go. Have a seat. There you go. I want a lawyer right away. You'll get one. 
Fine, just not right away. And she'll stay over here by herself. Hopefully she'll settle down, cooperate with the booking process, come out in a little while. But she's going to be in there for probably half hour or so at least until she calms down and cooperates with the procedures. Hopefully over here by herself, a little more out of view. She won't be taking her clothes off, exposing herself to the male, male inmates out there, creating a disturbance. Hopefully we won't have to worry about that again. The sooner you behave, the sooner you get out of this cell. Do you understand me, Linda? Until you calm down, you cannot come out of here. She just doesn't get it. She wasn't following instruction or listening to what she's being told. She's going to be banging on the glass. She was very animated all over the cell, acting very erratic. All right, what's your name? I can't hear you. Now, what's your name? No, what's your name? That part has nothing to do with me. You have to show us that you're not going to act all crazy and expose yourself. If we understand each other, then you need to have a seat and settle down and you show me that you can behave and then we'll let you out. Excellent. She seems to indicate that she understood what Corporal Bryant was saying, but whether or not she'll do it, I don't know. So uh, we'll give her a few minutes and see what happens. Linda has calmed down quite a bit. I can see her back there. So what I'm gonna do is walk her through the process because she disrobed earlier and if she goes through that, that same type of scenario again, that could obviously cause us a large problem in the open booking area. All right. I wanna go home. Yeah, but it doesn't work that way, Linda. I'm trying to help you out so you can go home, but right, you gotta follow the process. Okay, wait till you do that bond stuff and fingerprint picture do do that when they call you up, okay? Linda and I were getting along famously, and I was able to explain to her the bonding procedure, the fingerprinting, and the photograph, and uh, she should be out within the next two hours. When I came to the county, I came for a job change and a career change, and I absolutely love this job. There's nothing about this job that I don't like. It's different than any other job I've ever had in the sense that um, it's not something that people normally do, and it changes you as a person. Have you been in the hospital the last 24 hours? Yes, sir. Are you suicidal? Negative, sir. Uh, I was. What'd you get arrested here? for? Apparently, I slammed my head in a patrol car. Okay. I don't know why. Got a little drink tonight? Yes, sir. I, uh... You're born in the U.S., right? Yes, sir. It's most not, certainly. Nothing sharp when you got any piercings I can't see? Negative. If yeah. I did, you'd most certainly find okay. them. I'm going to release your left hand when I do. Just lean forward, put your hand on the counter, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Put your hands there. It's kind of tight, so I'm going to have to push on a little bit. I understand. Okay. All right, hand flat. Big deal. Pick up your shoes, set them on the counter. You can take your hands down to do that. What else are you on? No, it was just going to be the detox thing. And got all jacked up and worked up about that. Uh, criminal mischief. So he was out doing something he shouldn't have been doing. There's a profile of white male adults between the ages of 25 and 35 Same under thing. the influence of alcohol Perfect. are most likely to commit suicide in jail. He falls right into that criteria, especially as upset as he was. Yeah, put these back on. He uh, headbutted the patrol car apparently and split his nose open there. This is the property that we took off here, all right? <laughs> you just go ahead and sign there. No, sir. I just. That's ma'am, actually. Oh, I apologize. That's all right. Go ahead and sign your name right here for your property. You're going to be here for about four or five hours before you get to go home tonight, all right? Okay. I'm going to get you sobered up. Yes, and we'll get you out of here, all right? Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, see your right hand. Yeah, he is a See your right hand. Just go like that. You must have that. Why don't you get a clean one and wipe, wipe off your face? There you go. I really broke my face open. Well, well you too bad. I've seen a lot worse. Why don't you go and have a seat over here? Go ahead and have a seat right over there. 
Alright. I apologize I put you guys through this tonight. You're not putting us through anything. We're here for eight hours. Sorry. Don't apologize. I understand that you're upset. But tomorrow you'll be over it. You'll have a hangover, but you'll be over it. The weather hasn't been that nice. And then now all of a sudden the weather's nice. People kind of go a little bit crazier than normal. Everybody goes out and drinks, hits the bars. A lot of men up here. So what did you get arrested for? Possession. What is it? Possession. Yeah. Meth? Mm -hmm. How long have you been doing meth? Off and on for quite a while. You don't look like a typical meth user. Open your mouth if your tongue. All right. Carry any needles on you? No. David, how long have you been doing meth? A few years. A few years? Were you working? No. Were you working before you started using meth? Yes. What were you doing? Um, I did office work, computer stuff. Office work? How do you support yourself now? Uh, my parents. Your parents. Go from having a job, paying your bills, to doing a drug. That, that's all you want to do is go after the drug. You don't want to work. Just want to waste your life away with meth and eventually kill yourself. Lift your foot up, bend at the knee. When's the last time you used? It's been a few days. A few days? How do you normally do it? Shoot. Shoot? Is it keeping you from working? Um, yes. Have you tried to get any help? I'm going to... I'm going to go through a drug treatment program? Change point, actually. Change point? Okay. Is that something that you wanted to get into or the court ordered you into? I need to get into it. Okay. Your property? All right. First uh, four fingers on your right hand there. Go straight down. Straight down, straight up. Uh, we're going to get some more fingerprints from you, so I don't have to worry about getting all the ink off. Have a seat in the chairs. Seems like more and more methamphetamines has become a common thing. It's uh, pretty much ruined his life. He had a good job where he was working with computers, and all that's gone down the tubes. Okay. okay. Come on, this way. How many times have you been in here? Quite a few. Quite a few. I've been here for a few years now. You know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to go back and I'm going to pull up the pictures from every time you came in here. And I want to see, the, want you to see the progress that meth has done to you. Okay? So I'm going to do that while I'm going to show you those pictures and see if that gives you a little bit more incentive. Okay? Look straight ahead. Okay, sir. Head on down there. Have a seat with the men. I'm going to come find you here in a few minutes. All right? He came in on a possession of a controlled substance charge, and the controlled substance that is his drug of choice is methamphetamines. Gotta love methamphetamines, you know? It's Just gotta love them. He said he was going into a drug treatment program and he's going into it voluntarily. When I meet someone like that, I want to go through, get the pictures of the times that he's been incarcerated and show him the difference between before he started using drugs and now. And hopefully it'll have a lasting effect on him that when he does go into drug treatment, he can refer to those pictures to give him a little bit more incentive. I want to show you something. All right. Remember him? What was this? Yep. That's before you started using. This right here is less than a year later. This one's horrible. How much weight do you think you lost between those two times? I don't know. There's no way you were 135 pounds at that time. 5'9 to 41. This is 1999. Before and after, pretty amazing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Wow. And that's today. So look at the difference. Normal kid right there. You seem like you have a pretty level head on your shoulders, and you're at that point where you want to end the cycle. And I, I, I really hope that you succeed. I really do. 
and the doors open up and they leave me outside. I'm gonna go home to my family tonight.